Welcome to the next episode of the Microbiology Tube. So today we'll be talking about the foodborne diseases. So foodborne diseases are those diseases that is transmitted by the means of the food. So before talking about the foodborne disease, I would like to classify the types of microorganisms. So first is the beneficial microorganisms. So beneficial microorganisms are those microorganisms which are used for making the food. For example, yogurt is made by the use of these beneficial microorganisms. Cheese are made by the use of the beneficial microorganisms. Kimchi, kinema, these are the product that is made by the beneficial microorganisms by the fermentations of any product. So next is the spoilage of the microorganisms. So these microorganisms are responsible for spoilage is for the spoilage of the food. For example, the spoilage of the meat, spoilage of the milk, spoilage of the cheese, spoilage of the vegetables. So these are the these are the examples of food which can be spoiled. So milk can be spoiled by you by the bacteria like the bacillus and the clostridium. So Vegetables can be spoiled by the fungi like the fusarium and mucor. So there are a lot of the microorganisms that is spoil is the food. Similarly, next is the pathogenic microorganisms. So pathogenic microorganisms are those microorganisms that causes the disease to the humans. So let's talk about the foodborne disease. So foodborne diseases are those diseases which are caused by consuming the unhealthy foods. So whenever we consume the unhealthy foods, then after if there is the disease, that is called the foodborne disease. So foodborne disease outbreaks may be you know noticed by you know epidemiological analysis or epidemiological methods. So if if someone goes to party, for example, if hundred people goes to a party and among them, if the majority of the people have the gastrointestinal infections after the consumption of the meal in the party then then it is then the food may consist of some of the pathogenic microorganisms and it may has caused the gastrointestine and these diseases are called the foodborne diseases so what are the conditions for food uh, conditions for foodborne illness so first is if there is the food the food must contains the microorganisms or the toxins so if there is the food the, the there should be a microorganisms in the food or there should be the toxin that is secreted by the microorganisms another the uh, thing is that the food must be a good medium for the growth of the microorganisms so there must be the abundant number of the nutrition that a microorganisms required to, in order to grow the food that is you know that consists of much spices much salt and many of much of the much amount of the oil so that is not favorable for the growth of the growth of the bacteria so that there is the chances of less spoilers of the food of these types of the food so next is the temperature so if the temperatures are opti optimum for the growth of the bacteria then there may be the chances of the spoilers so optimum temperature means if we consider the uh, mesophiles uh, that is about 37 degree centigrade so so the temperature in 0 degree centigrade and one or, or one up to the four that is the temperature where there is the lesser growth of the number lesser growth of the microorganisms so next is enough time must be given in order to produce or in order to grow the bacteria or in order to produce produce the toxins and those type of food must be consumed by the human so these are the conditions for foodborne illness so foodborne illness can be classified into the two types one is the foodborne infections and next is the foodborne intoxication so foodborne infections means there is the involvement of the microorganisms so there is the direct involvement of the microorganisms so i write here d that stands for the direct involvement of the microorganisms but in the foodborne intoxication there is indirect involvement involvement of the microorganisms or in some of the foods there may not be the involvement of the microorganisms <coughs> let's see here what is the foodborne infection 
so in the food borne infections what happens is that we consume the food and along with the food we consume the live bacteria so if we consume the live bacteria along with the food then those bacteria then those bacteria will colonize in our intestine and it will infect the intestinal tract so next is living organism must be consumed that is that is one part so the examples of the food borne infections are the salmonella food borne infections that is caused by salmonella species clostridial food infections that is caused by the clostridium perfringens so actually the food borne infection can transmit from one person to another person so it may spread from person to person for example if a person is suffering from the vibrio cholerae and the vibrio cholerae can be transmitted from one person to the another person by the food okay so next is after the microorganisms enter insert inside the intestinal intestine so then after it will multiply and invade the intestinal lining so what may be the factor of the food borne infections so that is the inadequate cooking is one of the factors that is responsible for causing the food borne infection next is the cross contaminations with the utensils or the contaminated hands and next is the poor personal hygiene so these are the factors that contributes the, to the food borne infection so next is the food borne intoxication so intoxication means that is toxin here you can see that is the toxin so what happens is that microorganisms will synthesize the toxin so microorganisms will synthesize the toxin and these toxins uh, will be consumed by the humans along with the food so what actually happens in the food there will be the microorganisms and in the food there will be the microorganisms which will synthesize the toxin and during where the consumption of the food the humans will consume this food along with the toxin and this toxin will will make the food borne intoxication so you can see toxins are consumed along the food the sources of the toxins are the bacteria and the fungi so uh, seafood some of the seafoods have the toxin by itself so it doesn't need the bacteria and the fungi so it doesn't spread from person to person because this is only the toxin this is not the life microorganisms uh, so it won't uh, spread from person to person and there won't be the multiplication and invasions of the intestinal lining in the food borne intoxication but the examples of the staphylo are the staphylococcal food borne intoxication that is caused by the staphylococcus aureus next is the clostridial food intoxications which are caused by the clostridium bot botulinum so these are some of the factors responsible for causing the food borne infection intoxication so thank you for watching my video if you really like the video please don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you